We went up and met Sully. We went to his house and I introduced him. I said, we're going to get a writer and we're going to do this. And we said, you know, did anything else happen along the way? And he started telling this story about how he and Jeff Skiles, the co-pilot, started to feel like maybe they hadn't done the right thing. Oh, and, wow. and, it, and it wasn't about the NTSB because they were just doing their job too, but it was such a long protracted series of hearings and things. And, and he started, he, he was in New York and he couldn't get home and he had a family, he had two daughters and he couldn't see his wife. And, and all of this started sure. really, he kind of went into post-traumatic stress or something of this event when everybody was saying, you're a hero, you're a hero. Right. And, and so we thought, whoa, there, there's, there's something we could develop. Mm. The Hudson was the only place that was long enough and smooth enough and wide enough to even attempt to land the airplane safely. Air traffic testified that you stated you were returning to LaGuardia, but you did not. I realized I could make it back, and it would have eliminated all the other options. Returning to LaGuardia would have been a mistake. Okay, well, let's get into how you calculated all those parameters. There was no time for calculating. I had to rely on my experience of managing the altitude and speed of thousands of flights over four decades. You're saying you didn't do anything? I eyeballed it. We worked and developed it for almost a year, and I went around to every studio and every cable, and when people heard it's called Sully or it's the miracle on the Hudson, they go, I know that story. Everyone in town passed. That's a very common story, by the way. I'm sure we can all, we all have those stories at this table. From beginning to when you got it made, how many years was that? Uh, six. But from when, from when Clint <coughs> said he wanted to do it, how long was <laughs> it? Two weeks. <laughs> two weeks. <laughs> we were together two shooting weeks. the Bourne movie in Tenerife, and Frank goes, <laughs> Clint read it, he wants to do it. And I go, when do you start? He goes, next month. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're gonna, yeah, I said, uh, Clint, I'm doing... <laughs> I'm doing a movie with Matt, and you know we're like shooting. Can you wait till January? He said, "No, I want to go in September." Uh, okay, and when Clint says he wants yeah, to go, yeah, you go. It's turbocharged. Is there an instance in one of your films where you made a decision on the fly, decided the last minute, and it turned out to be one of the best things in the film? Frank was involved with one of the most iconic moments in film that was made up. I was just thinking yeah. about that. <clears throat> um, on Raiders. On Raiders, right? yeah. 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 Which one yeah. is that? It's the moment when we're in the... Um, oh, the gun. gun. Yes. The gun. Yeah. Yeah. Tell the gun story. Yeah. And it solved oh, a whole right. bunch of problems. Well, tell us what it was. <laughs> well, we were in Tunisia. We had been shooting in Tunisia in 130 degrees for six weeks. Everybody was tired. It was. We had three days left. And we were supposed to shoot this big fight between the whip and the sword. So... Indiana Jones was going to fight this big swordsman through this marketplace in a Tunisian village. <laughs> and, and so we, we, and we had this pile of storyboards like this and we had three days to shoot it. So we started in the morning and we shot it the whole morning and it took the whole morning just to do like three storyboards. Right. And it was really slow, mainly because when you're doing a big action sequence in another country, translating to tell the villagers and all the extras and everything else that was going on just took forever. So I went to Stephen at lunch and I said, mm, you know, it's going to take five days to do this. And Harrison was at lunch and, and he was with Stephen. I now know the story, what happened after I left. He went and talked to Harrison and Harrison was not feeling well. And I'm not sure, who, you know, it's... No, no, but nobody will say who said so what. I won't <laughs> say it. But somehow somebody <laughs> said, why not, you know, I've got this gun and oh, why not I just use it? And Stephen said, got it. And he came to me after lunch and he said, here's what I want to do. Find a guy that can handle the sword and do all these fancy things with it. And I go, why? Well, he's just, you know, okay. So we found it. And after lunch, we did three shots and we were two days ahead of schedule. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Left. It's and it's great. the biggest moment in the movie. Yeah, yeah. Great. And, and, but the key there is when you're given that challenge, solving it gets you to a better place and gets you to a better idea sometimes. You're on a plane, thinking rapidly. <laughs> this plane happens to have a fantastic library of DVDs. Which DVD are you going to take on that desert island when it crashes? I'd have to say Wizard of Oz. Oh. You know, between the fantasy, the storytelling, I would maybe hope that I would wake up and not be on the desert island. <laughs> <laughs> like she did in Kansas, so uh, that would be 
my choice. That's also a really practical answer because <laughs> it is a film that we are forced as parents to watch. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So it's actually been vetted. Like yes. you can actually yes, exactly. survive watching yes. this movie. Yes. Hi, I'm Frank Marshall, producer of Sully. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to more videos from The Hollywood Reporter. Thank you.